Hello, I'm Dr. A.M. Barrett, Director of Stroke Rehabilitation Research at the Kessler Foundation. Here at the Kessler Foundation, we strive to improve the lives of people with physical and cognitive disabilities caused by stroke, multiple sclerosis, brain and spinal cord injury, and other chronic neurological conditions. Investigators at Kessler Foundation develop ways to help people with disabilities overcome obstacles and lead full and productive lives in our communities. Clinicians apply what research studies are telling us to do a better job every day helping people with stroke return to their activities and social roles. As one of our many successful projects, we developed what we call the KF-NAP, or the Kessler Foundation Neglect Assessment Process, which is used to measure the symptoms and severity of the hidden disability called spatial neglect. This hidden disability can limit people in their activities of everyday life. What are hidden disabilities? There are many problems that interfere with people's ability to take part in sports, fun, family activities, work, and even interfere with their ability to care for themselves independently. Most people do not know that more than half of the people who survive a stroke will be limited in their ability to care for themselves, to do what they want to do in the community, and to resume social, work and family roles because of disabilities that are invisible to other people. Memory and communication disorders, depression, and functional vision problems such as spatial neglect are all hidden disabilities. At least two and a half to three million people are affected by these problems right now in the United States. The problems are severe, especially when the stroke leaves damage in the right hemisphere of the brain. The right side of our brain is said to be creative, artistic, intuitive. But many people are not aware that it is in charge of some absolutely critical functions. This is what is very important to understand. The right brain is the key knowledge center locating our bodies in the space around us and telling us how we should compute the relationship between our bodies and everything in the world, moment by moment, even as we are moving and even if both we and the world around us are moving at the same time. The right brain lets us do something as simple as looking up as a loved one enters the room to exchange a smile. It lets us put on socks while sitting on the side of the bed without losing our balance. It also helps us do complicated activities like sports or driving. When the right brain is damaged, we see that very simple activities, such as how we put on our clothing, are difficult to do accurately. Here, we see a typical brain scan of a person who has had a right brain stroke. As the green arrows point out, the visual cortex and its wiring have not been directly affected in the back of the brain. Still, functional vision for using space is disrupted in the hidden disability called spatial neglect. Here we see a typical attempt by a person with this kind of brain damage to make a copy of a drawing. You can see that the left side of the drawing is simply missing. The same thing occurs when this person attempts to draw a flower. We can see in this slide that a person with a right brain stroke has had trouble putting on his glasses accurately. Also, he shaved his beard on the right, but not on the left side. This doesn't ordinarily require vision, it just requires the kind of movement knowledge that our right brain holds ready for us to use all through our lives. The very important thing to understand is that the ability of people with right brain injuries to do simple tasks, both visual and non-visual, is affected. This can compromise their safety. It may be hard to believe, but these kind of symptoms, which can have devastating consequences, are simply not recognized in many stroke survivors. This means that some stroke survivors literally don't get diagnosed. They might tell a family member or an emergency room technician or a nurse about their symptoms, and they might have trouble with putting on glasses or getting dressed or transferring, but their caregivers may mistake their problems for something else. Because these people are not diagnosed, they never receive treatment. They may not even know they have had a stroke. Rehabilitation science is generating new targeted approaches for spatial neglect after stroke, but these people are not diagnosed so they never receive rehabilitation, or they receive inappropriate, ineffective treatment. Their caregivers and families experience shame and burden. 
The problems of spatial neglect are often mistaken for personality, motivation, or psychiatric problems. People with spatial neglect have a distorted three-dimensional reality. The fabric of space around them is experienced differently than it is for you and for me. Their reality distortion may seem bizarre to families and caregivers who may be profoundly ashamed to admit to their health care providers that they need help and to advocate for new treatments. Lastly, spatial neglect is a hidden disability that tremendously increases safety risk and cost of care, both in the hospital and after discharge to post-acute and community settings. Falls, rehospitalization, slowed recovery of strength, walking and swallowing, and many other problems are more common in these survivors. Targeted treatment may be the key to reducing the cost and burden of this problem for these people, their families, and our society. Dr. Pei Chen, a research scientist here at the Kessler Foundation, is leading the effort to develop the KFNAP, along with help from our clinical partner, the Kessler Institute for Rehabilitation. In this tutorial, you will learn how to use the KFNAP to measure symptoms of spatial neglect in the context of a real-world environment. This is a critical first step to using treatments, such as the KF-PAT, a PRISM adaptation therapy protocol, and other spatial neglect treatments to help stroke survivors gain function and freedom as they recover.